Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to look at the real-time viewport compositor and I'm going to show you some cool tricks. All right, so here we are in uh, the short film that I've been making. I want to see my compositing effects in the viewport. So in order to get that set up, first thing you need to do is come over here. You're going to switch to the compositor. So we've got the compositor editor opening. You need to click here for use nodes and then you'll get this basic setup, which will appear, which will be your render layers and a composite output node. So the way it kind of works is Blender creates the image, it renders it, and that's what this is. And then it sends this over through to here. And then this is what is saved for you uh, when you're doing your rendered outputs. But with the real-time viewport compositor, we can actually interact with this compositing setup and see the results, not when we hit render, but while we're working in a real-time environment. So. What I can do is I'll go over here and this little drop down up at the top next to the render settings, it asks you, where do you want to see it? So right now it's disabled, but we want to see it whenever we're looking through the camera. So this means if we pop out of the camera, we're just in our 3D viewport, we won't see it. Or always, so this will show us the compositor effects no matter what, if we're looking through our camera or just our viewport. I'm going to tick camera because I want to see it through here. And you can see nothing's happened yet because we don't have any nodes here yet, but I'll just show you really quick. If I grab a RGB curves, and just drop it in here and then you know pop it up, bam, you can see I'm able to see in real time uh, the update. This is being rendered right now in Eevee. So if I come over to my render tabs, you can see render engine is set to Eevee. I've got ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, motion blur, all that stuff's turned on. Let's talk about a couple of practical use cases. So the first one is probably the lens. Uh, so let's go here, lens distortion. This node is pretty useful. I'm going to drop it down here. One thing we've never had in Blender is lens distortion um, for really wide lenses. So if I select my camera, I'll just jump up here, this camera that I've got, if I change the lens, so right now I'm at 146 millimeter, if I change this to like a 14 mil and we, you know, we're really zoomed out, let's, let's push in. Oops, sorry, I'll just lock my camera to view. I'll push in on the character here. So I've got this really crazy wide angle view. If you were to really use a lens like this, you wouldn't have straight lines. You'd have a distortion effect around your image. So this distortion right here will give us that. So if I hit like 0.1, for example, you can see it bows in, but we want to go the other way. So negative 0.1, uh, maybe a bit more negative 0.3. Now to get an actual negative 0.2, an actual like accurate effect, uh, this isn't the way to do it. Um, and there's no real way in Blender for us to get accurate lens distortion, but it's pretty good as an approximation. All right, now another effect that I like is actually jitter. If I click this, jitter is going to add grain to the image. Now I know that like, you know, the whole point of using Eevee is that you don't have grain, right? In your image because you can render it and you don't have to worry about the cycles, you know, kind of updating. But grain is actually really useful for, you know, creating a filmic look. And uh, this, this grain is not, you know, necessarily like a specific grain type, like Kodak film stock, you know, whatever, whatever. It's it's more of a general just sort of noise, but I do like it. It's quite nice. You can adjust it though, if you want to, if this is a bit too heavy, what we can do is split this out. So let's go here for a mix uh, node and I'll just drop it here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this lens distortion node and I'm gonna turn jitter off and turn distortion off just so it's clean, there's nothing going on. And what I can do is this one right here could be the, the one that distorts our image. I'll just turn this factor down so we can see. So this was doing our distortion, right? Now I'm gonna turn off jitter here. We're gonna add jitter in later. So if we come here, I can grab this output. This is our lens distortion output. And I'm gonna bring this over and I will put this into the second image socket. So at the moment we're mixing two identical images together. But on one of these, what we could do is this one down here without anything on it, we can add jitter. So this was just our jitter addition. So you can see I can like change this slider to control how much uh, jitter I end up with. Another cool option that we've got is dispersion, which right here, if I turn this up a little bit to like 1.2, you can see it starts to split the image as you get towards the edge of the lens. It's a chromatic um, aberration is what it's called, where it splits into the R, the red, green, and blue channels. Um, and you can turn this up to get some crazy cool effects. Like, look at that. It's like we're uh, the POV is some kind of like hunter, you know, moving through the scene. But what's cool is, you know, this is all real time. So I can, I can actually move around now and change my shot. So one thing to bear in mind is with jitter, when you're looking at it through the real time compositor, 
if I move from frame to frame, you'll notice that it's not really changing. Like the jitter doesn't really seem, YouTube might be canceling this out too. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see this detail, but the image I'm looking at, the grain is consistent every frame. So it's not like actually like grain, it's more like just a pattern that's set. However, when you render, so I'll just pull up, I've got some render frames here. Um, if I go between two frames here in actual render, so I go file, you know, image render, um, you can see the grain pattern does change every frame. So there's some little discrepancies between the two, but that's okay because, you know, the whole point of the real-time viewport is really just to be, you know, looking at the look of your frame and getting it right so you're happy with it. Um, when you do your final render, all the effects will properly be um, applied. So that's a really cool one. I really enjoy doing that. Um, now, another thing I like to add is some vignettes. Now, a vignette is a, like a shadow around the outside of frame. Um, and there's a couple of cool ways to do that. So let's uh, pull up uh, an ellipse mask. So I'll just hit Shift A to add and then type in EL in the search section. We get the ellipse mask. If I just drop this straight into our image, you can see what it looks like. And uh, I'll just come here and I'll change the, the, uh, the scale. Uh, let's see, width, bring that width up. To like this and the height as well. There we go. And then we're going to blur it. So I'm going to go search. So shift A and then click search, grab the blur node and drop this down. And we're going to um, I'll just select these, these two and maybe try 100. And we'll blur it out maybe a bit further. 500. There we go. So now it's this nice kind of gradual blur. And then what we can do is we can mix that into our main image using a mix node and setting it the mix node to multiply. And we're going to pop this, we'll leave this in the top socket and we'll take our image and put it in the bottom socket. And now we've got this nice sort of darkening on the outside of our frames. So let me, maybe I'll just swap these so we can fade it on and off. You can see the effect. So that's with it off and this is with it on. So it just does a nice job of like focusing the image. Now, again, you can, you know, add in a lot of other stuff like you can use RGB curves to, uh, you know, grade things like a lot of times if you go to um, uh, RGB curves, if I drop this here and then go into the blue channel and like pump the blue in the shadows and then drop it a little bit up here in the highlights. This is uh, switch to film like as well. This is, this is typically a very uh, film-like look when you have blue in the shadows, but uh, don't have it in the highlights. So that's a nice way to kind of, again, make things feel a little bit more cinematic. Um, but yeah, it's very, very moody with this grain. I love this. It looks like a, a shot from Alien. Expect the Xenomorph to like pop out any second now. Now, if you're on the second tier and up for Patreon, I'm going to drop this project file into um, the folder for this week, for this month, I mean, so you can have access to uh, all these different cool uh, live compositing effects that you can use. So I'll have the vignette in there and the lens distortion setup I like. So hope you have a lot of fun playing with that. If you like this video, hit that like button and please subscribe for more content. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. Oh, 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 o